in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and he lists some of the more common or uh, more uh, normally manifested gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to work in his church. And so I'm just going to read with you. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it starts on uh, page, set, or page 7, verse 7. To each is given the manifestations of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, to another faith, gifts of healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, different kinds of tongues and interpretations of tongues. And later on in uh, verse 29, he continues with teachers, uh, administrators, and gifts of service and help. But what are these gifts? And how can we see them working in the Christian life? The gift of wisdom is given by the Holy Spirit to a particular person uh, in order to give them a particular direction in a ministry or in a, a particular event. So if something isn't working, uh, you know, people aren't showing up to this thing and, and we're really confused about what's supposed to happen, God's Holy Spirit will come into a person with the gift of prophecy, or sorry, with the gift of wisdom, and be able to say, this is the direction we're going to take. And it works, because the Holy Spirit is leading it. The gift of knowledge is uh, being able to receive the Holy Spirit's word about an event or, or something that you would have no idea on your own about, what, about what, what that is. It can happen either in the past, present, or future. So uh, one, of our, one of my brother's seminarians was recently on a trip on a, on, a, on a trip in Mexico, and while praying with this woman, he, he got a word from the Holy Spirit that she needed healing in her back and in her leg. And he asked her, you know, in the name of the Holy Spirit, like, you know, I, I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me that you have something wrong with your back or your leg. And she said, yeah, I've suffered with that for a while. And then they prayed with her, and she was healed of both. And so the word of knowledge can be used by the Holy Spirit to, to move other gifts as well. They all work together with each other. The gift of prophecy is a supernatural communication from God, whereby God tells his people his now word. This can be an encouragement, uh, you know, my children, you have done well in this work, continue, or an exhortation, um, my people are not praying as much, you need to return to me and, and renew your strength in me. The, the, the word of prophecy is used by God to grab people's attention and to point, point them in a direction. The gift of faith is uh, a person who has a particularly strong gift or charism of faith has an unshakable confidence that God is going to act, and then he does. And it's really cool to see. I, I have a priest friend back home, and he was organizing a pro-life uh, walk, and there was like 85% chance it was going to rain. And uh, there's thunder outside, and they're all getting ready in the church, and they're all putting on their coats and, and umbrellas, and he's just like, it's not going to rain today. God's not going to let it rain on us. And they're like, Father, like, it's starting to drizzle outside. He's like, no, 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 it's not going to rain. God's not going to let it rain. And it didn't rain for the entire march. As soon as they got back in the church, it started to rain. That is what the charism of faith looks like. <laughs> the charism of faith is used in different, uh, transfers into different charisms as well, particularly miracles and healing. Miracles is an intervention through the power of the Holy Spirit to the normal ways of working, uh, because the Holy Spirit isn't normal do whatever he wants. And so this can look like something like multiplying food or um, walking on water. You know, things that Jesus did, but that we are called to do as well, because as Christians, we are called to live in the supernatural and act in it. Uh, the gift of healing is um, comes in two ways. There can be physical healing, or there can be inner healing. And this is just what we've read, or what we've read constantly in the Bible, is Jesus going out healing people and his apostles and followers doing the exact same thing. Uh, recently, we had uh, a few weeks ago, we had a retreat here in Detroit, and uh, again, one of the brothers, JP and Jose, they were praying over this, this woman who, on top of a whole bunch of other problems, she had such pain in her arms that she needed to wear braces constantly. And as they were praying, JP said he felt fire in his hands, and he asked her if she felt the same thing. She said she felt heat and fire running through her body. And then, with that charisma of faith that I talked about earlier, he proclaimed that she was going to be healed in the name of Jesus asked her to take off her braces, and she hasn't worn them since, completely without pain. Inner healing is uh, people through our lives, including myself, all of us bear uh, emotional wounds, psychological wounds, spiritual wounds, 
And a person with the gift of inner healing is able, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to help that person get over that and to heal that and let the Holy Spirit flow into them and go to those places in their lives where they've been affected and bring them into the healing and the fullness of life that God wants for them. Discernment of spirits is the supernatural ability to recognize whether a person or a situation is acting in a human spirit, a divine spirit, or an evil spirit. Because as humans, we can operate on all three levels because we're spiritual beings, but we're also physical beings. And so um, a person with discernment of spirits is able to tell which or a combination of which spirits a person is working in. And this can be very useful because the demonic or the evil powers sometimes try and mimic the good so as to cause confusion or fear. I had experience with this last summer when uh, I was a youth, I was helping out at a youth retreat, it was like a youth chaperone or youth leader. And uh, one of the kids had an experience during adoration where he was talking or communing with this entity named Jeremiah. And because it happened in the, uh, in the, in the course of adoration, a lot of people thought, well, this must be a good thing because, you know, it's during adoration, maybe it's the prophet Jeremiah, maybe it's called for the priesthood, or they had all these ideas. But on the way home, they came up to me, I was sitting up here in the front of the bus, and they said, you need to come, like, we don't know what this guy is doing. I went to the back, and uh, his eyes were closed, and he was shaking, and he was saying something under his breath that I couldn't understand because he was saying it so quickly and so, so quietly. I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> and they expect me to do something? Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so uh, so I, I just started to pray with them, and I was asking, I was like, Holy Spirit, like, I have no idea what's going on, but you do, so can you please help me? And uh, he did, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. And... Uh, I, I just knew interiorly this was not a human spirit, this was not a good spirit, this was an evil spirit, and it had to leave. And so uh, I just asked, you know, in the name of Jesus, like, any spirits that are not of God be sent away. And I just helped him to pray over and over again, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Because again, at the beginning of uh, chapter 12, we, we know that no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. And, and he returned back to normal, and everything was good after that. But but that's how discernment of spirits works. It's able to tell which spirit or, or combination of which people are acting in. The gift of tongues is next. This one always seems to hook up or, or, or trip up or, or scare people. Um, how many of you, have you have heard that the gift of tongues is either for crazy people, uh, demonically possessed people, or those like weird Protestant denominations that have really want to <laughs> I, I have heard that for, for quite a while. And this is just not true. Uh, it's very evident through the history of the Catholic Church, as well as very evident in the Bible, that this is a normal thing for the Christian life to experience. There are two different kinds of speaking in tongues. Uh, there's xenoglossia and glossolalia, two Greek terms for the, the, the different kinds of tongues. Xenoglossolalia, or xenoglossia rather, is um, what we see in the book of Acts when they first get sent out at Pentecost to be able to speak in human languages of which they have no clue what they are, right? So the apostles, they all speak Aramaic. They go out in the streets and they're, they're, they're preaching in Asian, uh, Persian, Romans. Like, everyone is understanding them in their own language. That's Xenoglossolalia. One of the one of our companion seminarians, uh, Reuben, was recently at a Chaldean, or sorry, last year rather, he was at a Chaldean Divine Liturgy or Mass. Is anyone here Chaldean? Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, the Chaldean Mass or Divine Liturgy is celebrated not in English, but in the Chaldean language. And Reuben didn't know the Chaldean language. But he wanted to participate in the Mass. So he asked the Holy Spirit, can you transform my, my tongues into Chaldean? And uh, he did. And he spoke the Mass in perfect Chaldean, sang the Mass parts in perfect Chaldean, so perfect that the priest came up to him afterwards and said, wow, where did you learn Chaldean? He's like, well, I, I don't know Chaldean. <laughs> Glossolalia is a little bit different. It's um, babbling or, or speaking in words that aren't in a human language. And uh, you can either sing or pray in tongues. And it is allowing yourself to be completely taken over by the Holy Spirit and to just surrender your intellect and your will over to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to give you and inspire words in you to speak. 
as a prayer language. This can also be used in a, in a manner of prophetic tongues, which is where you speak uh, prophecy in this language um, that you don't understand. Which leads into my next, uh, the next charism rather on the list of interpretation of tongues, which is where a person is able to hear those sounds that don't make sense, but be able to understand by the power of the Holy Spirit what that prophecy is and what God wants to tell his people through that. Again, there's so many more charisms, and I really encourage you uh, to look up. There's a website on the top of your handout um, that has a, a, a better listing of the, of the gifts, and the website is from the, the, Di the Catholic Diocese of Lafayette. They <coughs> compiled a great list of the charisms and how you can see them working. But what does this have to do with us? What this has to do with us is that today, the Holy Spirit is going to fill you in a new way through this baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has already given you these gifts at baptism. But he wants to stir them up. And he wants to give you more. Because he always wants to give you more. The more you open up, the more he can give. And so my, my encouragement for you today is to just open up to him. Don't be afraid of what the Holy Spirit has to offer. We know from the scripture that God is a good father. In Matthew 7, 11, God is a good father who loves to give good gifts to his children. So we don't need to be afraid of what God is going to give you today. And so if you're afraid of what the Holy Spirit, you know, the, the charisms are not like a grocery store where you can walk down the aisle and be like, oh, you know, miracles, that sounds awesome. I want to do that. Or, you know, healings, oh, that sounds good. Tongues is a little scary. Or, oh, prophecy, I'm, yeah, I'm not a prophet. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You, you just open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and you say, whatever you want to give me, give me, and I will work it. And so, yeah, I'm just going to leave you with that, to not be afraid of what the Holy Spirit wants to do with you in your life today. And uh, just, just let him work and just see what gifts he will give you and how he's going to move in the church today as he did in the early church. Amen.